Great. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Beeson. I'm a senior analyst at Forrester. It's a research and advisory firm. I'm based here in London, despite the American accent. Been here for quite a long time, so don't let it distract you. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be here today talking about building an insights driven business. Now I have a lot of slides in just half an hour, so you will be getting these slides, so don't necessarily worry about reading everything and looking at all of the, the numbers, but I've left it on the slides so that when you do get them, it's actually useful and not just a picture that's meaningless to you. So with that, just want to set the context around why we're talking about being an insights driven business and it's really driven by consumer behavior and expectations we all know and have heard repeatedly you know, it's data driven it, you know we're all digitally connected you need to be creating seamless customer experiences that's fine but what is now happening is that digital touch points are not just being used one after the other but are being used simultaneously so we're at the next step change in terms of a digital customer experience and a hybrid customer experience where you're in store and online through your mobile device. So that complexity is even greater, but also the opportunity to get the data and the insights and triangulate that to create more relevant customer experiences. So in the face of this increasing pressure across industries and contexts, and also this applies B2B too, I might be talking about consumer expectations, but as in our business lives, we're also consumers, our expectations translate because we know the art of the possible. So the aim of the game for most organizations globally, in fact, when we survey cross industry globally, business executives, and ask them what are the key objectives for the next 12 months, unsurprisingly, growing revenue, reducing costs, but customer experience is right up there in the top three. And this has been consistent for the past three to five years, it's ranked within the top three. And of course, it's actually a virtuous cycle because if you're improving customer experience, you're reducing costs, you're driving revenue growth. But the fact that customer experience is in you know, C-level business strategy objectives is an interesting key point but also it's translating into IT priorities. So this isn't just talking about it, it's actually now getting to the point of execution and being part of the day-to-day -day business operations and objectives. However, going after great customer experiences is not enough for business success in our current climate. You know, with the, the pace, the velocity of commerce, competitive landscape, all the different pressures and challenges that any industry is facing, there is need to do more than that. And at Forrester, we talk about customer obsessed businesses. Now let's not necessarily evaluate the choice of the naming of this oper operational model. But suffice to say, it is a way of doing business that is deeply rooting, rooted in customer understanding. And that customer understanding is feeding business decisions, not just in terms of customer facing experiences, but operational decisions, strategic decisions, leadership. So it's pervasive across the business. The success metrics, the objectives are focused on customer outcomes rather than just business outcomes as traditionally we tend to do. The data and the insights, the context in which those decisions are made are informed by a wealth of understanding and insights about the customer and about the business. And the key components of being customer obsessed and shifting to this kind of operating model are these three elements. So going from customer aware to customer led. So again, focused on customer outcomes rather than just business outcomes being insights driven, which we'll go more deeply into for, for this session, but also being connected. So cross-functional connections, alignments because of you know, metrics, having the ability to have different functions across your organization working together, because increasingly, when we have hybrid customer experiences that we need to be supporting, greater expectations from you know, business customers, whoever they may be, there is more of a need to have multiple functions working together to support those business outcomes because of the complexity you need to support. So all in all, actually these three elements work together and are fundamental for becoming an insights driven business. And that's what we're gonna deep dive into now. So when I think about insights driven businesses, it's not just about customer insights, which would be the customer-led element, the deep customer understanding. 
this is a broader perspective of really using insights from a range of sources and an increasing range of sources. That's business intelligence, customer insights, external data, competitive data, all coming together and being evaluated and translated into action. So it's not just about having that data and having that insight, disseminating it to across your business with the right governance, but also ensuring that, that those insights are actually used for action. There actually is a process and a culture and a way of operating and working where those insights are fundamentally part of the decision making. And underneath all of this is, of course, a lot of technology and infrastructure. And again, you know, my, my work as an analyst, I focus on business strategy. I'm not a technology analyst. So again, I'm not going to go deep into the how and the nuts and bolts of this. But it is a lot of complex combinations of different technology and architecture, depending on your business and the context and what your objectives are. But when we think about this, an insights-driven business, What's a for instance? What is an example of an insights-driven business? And I hesitated actually using this next example, but it, it's just a good one. And I don't know if everybody is aware of Stitch Fix. Yes, no, yes, no, no. I thought you were going to use Uber. No, no, no. No, Uber, that is, I'm not using that one anymore. But we all know Uber. But Stitch Fix, for those that don't know, it's an online subscription um, personal stylist service, essentially. So you, it's a subscription model. You can get sent clothes either monthly, bi-monthly, and you pay for what you keep, and you send back what you don't want. And so this is the, the concept of the business. But it is fundamentally insights-driven in every way. So they have a chief algorithms officer, for one, that is in the C-suite. They are, have a team of data scientists that fundamentally are a key part of how this business operates. So not only do they ask customers for information and context, they're asking about preferences, not just you know, your dimensions, your demographics, but also what do you do at the weekend? What are your hobbies? You know, what materials are questions that are actually going to get to a broader context of a customer's need and lifestyle that's going to help inform the buying decisions and the stylist's decisions, the individual stylists that are pulling together this curated pack on a regular basis. But also that insight is not just supporting the customer experience. The, what is being returned, what is popular across different customer bases, all of that is also informing what inventory is held so that unlike a lot of other retailers, they don't have to hold as much retailer. It's much more efficient operation. You know, the, the team of data scientists are creating algorithms to address different business pain points from I think I read even in their warehouse, they found that there was some latent time with in employees needing to get from one end to the other. So they created an algorithm to identify the optimum route for them to get to A to B. You know, all of that, trying to really figure out how they can use data and insights to improve not just the customer experience, but their operations. So fundamentally, you know, all encompassing you know, insights driven business. However, I appreciate you know, this is a digital native example, but it's a great example of what we're talking about in terms of business insights, not just customer understanding and actually executing that. Another example I wanted to bring up is a little, well, I think left field, but we'll, we'll see what you think. And it's a log logistics example. So you know, some of you may be more aware of logistics processes than others, but just for a quick level set of what we're talking about, traditionally, when it comes to logistics, you have a driver and they have a load. They will keep that load, and their responsibility is to take it from the origin to the destination. So more often than not, it's going to encompass the same driver having to drive for X amount of time until they're legally required to take a rest or a stop, probably needing to spend you know, overnight, one night away from home, away from family, and then getting to the destination, picking up something else, and coming back to back home. So, but Truckster has rethought this, and to give it away, it's kind of the Uber of logistics. So they are taking AI, algorithms, GPS, connected devices, pulling that all together, and rethinking how the, essentially how they're connecting the resources to get items and you know, loads from A to B. 
And they've also focused on driver needs, so thinking about their employee needs, but also this translates into better customer experiences because it's more efficient, lower cost, and potentially faster service, except for the things that are without, out of their control, like roadworks or you know, something like that. So what happens is they look at their resources, their drivers, their locations, alongside all the loads that need to get to their respective destinations and they triangulate these together. So they have one driver with one load, and then at the same time, in location two, a second driver with their load. They, and each load needs to go to the corresponding lo location. So they use all of that algorithms, geodata, everything they have to identify the optimum location for them to meet, change loads, and drive back. Each person drives back to their respective home location. They don't have to spend a night away from home. It's more efficient. You know, they're getting the load from A to B faster. There's no overnight between when the load arrives at its destination. You know, all in, you know, the, the Uberization of this logistics pattern, thinking differently about how they are using all of the elements of their network to optimize the flow. So again, an insights-driven business that's actually flipping a whole business model on its head, but optimizing not just their customer's experience, but their business operations. So, oh, sorry, they're going back home. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, when we're thinking about insights-driven businesses, Forrester has done, as we know, a lot of research, and we've done executive surveys and that are assessing the relative maturity of being an insights-driven business. And we've done this for a year, several years now. And as you can see, this has trended from 2019 to last year. And what we've seen is a shift from beginner to intermediate, which actually makes sense in the context of the pandemic. Everybody needed to step up a gear, push forward their digital objectives because of the context of consumers being pushed online, et cetera, et cetera. But there is still a relatively small proportion of businesses that are at the advanced level, mostly going to be digital natives. And of course, behind this are differences in terms of industry, um, in terms of the relative context of the business. Like most of the challenges behind this improving maturity is challenges of legacy systems, of data access, data privacy. Those are the primary challenges and blockers that are identified in terms of what is you know, a barrier to this. And then across industries, there are some slight shifts in terms of, if I'm gonna get my memory serving me right, it's um, manufacturing, utilities, and telecommunications are actually higher maturity levels or moving faster than others. And also B2B organizations more so than B2C. And really behind that is because it is more tangible for B2B organizations to really go after the operational improvement of the business-driven insights, or the insights-driven business, sorry. Whereas for a B2C organization, a lot of that is the customer insight, which can be difficult to get hold of, privacy issues, attribution challenges, et cetera. Um, but but you know, behind what is an advanced insights-driven business is an organization that's really invested time and money into the infrastructure and the technology, but also shifting their organization's style of working, their processes, how their teams are coordinated and aligned. Um, having a culture of insight where you know, that process is embedded in day-to-day -day working. There's incentive to it. There's access. There's structure. Data is, is available. Um, and a culture of continually experimenting. If something fails, learning from that, having an iterative agile approach. So why bother doing this? Because to increase your maturity and be an insights-driven business, it takes you know, time and money and significant investment in terms of your people, processes, and tech. But it drives significant business value. Now, all of these numbers are comparing beginner-level organizations with advanced companies from our survey. But we found that when you are an advanced level business, you're eight times more likely to say they grew revenue by 20% or more. It's also going to improve operations and customer experiences. So 1.5 times more likely to report an increase in customer lifetime value. Now notice this isn't just about conversion rates, but customer focused metrics on long-term customer value. 
1.7 times more likely to report improved ability to adapt to unforeseen circumstances. So that insight from consumer behavior, competitive context is giving businesses the opportunity to get ahead of the curve and predict and see shifts that they need to react to and be more flexible and nimble, which is a repeated theme in the world we live in now. And 1.3 times more likely to report improved customer experiences. Now, as I said, being customer accessed and insights driven is more than just good customer experiences, but it's still a fundamental element of that and going to drive business growth. So we've talked about, you know, it's driving business revenue, it's, you know, business positive, as I like to say. But it's also not just about improving the current products and services and operations, but a lot of advanced insights driven businesses also create new opportunities based on their insights and their approach. So some of these, I'll just go through a list that we have. First of all, there is discovering new sources of revenue. So much more likely to either use AI or some way, you know, their, their insights about customers, about the competitive landscape has identified a new opportunity for them. So one example for this is Qantas Airlines. They identified that there was an opportunity for them not just to have travel insurance, but to have health insurance. So they created an app. Um, you know, they, they have incentives for consumers to, to get points and sign up, but they recognize the opportunity to cross-sell for their customers, the travel insurance, health insurance, and just the airline services. But they needed the technology and processes to be able to identify and orchestrate the customer journey, coordinate and identify the relevant communications for that cross-sale. You don't want to get that wrong. So that is underlying really a fundamental insights driven business where it's not just about the new revenue opportunity, but also thinking about what is the customer experience that is actually going to drive more business value, not just as a new business unit on its own, but in terms of the opportunity to cross pollinate and you know, have more of a virtuous cycle across all of their businesses. Next up is creating market difference, differentiation. Um, whether that's differentiated experiences, add-ons to products and services to augment the experience um, or the, the execution. Example of this is GE and their predictive maintenance. So creating digital twins to identify and predict when maintenance is required, whether it's airlines, utilities, renewable. And they aim to reduce their customers' maintenance costs by as much as 10%. So that is an incentive for a lot of organizations to be able to shift their business model to thinking about rather than having the planned usage-based schedule of maintenance to do it on a predictive basis so you're avoiding unnecessary um, spend or time being used. A consumer example would be something like um, Gerber, like creating an added service for a customer that has a knock-on effect of driving more sales of product. So for Gerber, baby food, they created an additional service for parents where you could call and you get access to a pediatrician, midwife, whoever it might be that you need support from or asking a question about early childhood. They used their understanding of parents' experiences of early childhood, what those questions are, to create this service for them. And they found that those that were active users of that service spent 25% more on products with Gerber. So it's not necessarily a new revenue stream, but an added service that's having the effect of driving more revenue. Again, insights fundamentally support identifying what that service should be and how it's going to be valuable. Just selling the data and selling the insights. You know, this can be relevant. Uh, the, the example is you know, maybe a little bit obvious of IBM, the weather uh, company. I was going to say the weather channel. <laughs> the weather company <laughs> um, selling insights to the likes of, again, airlines, renewable energy. And in this case, you know, example of wind and solar farms using that insights along with their own data and intelligence and other resources to help forecast capacity and you know, improve business execution, customer experience. Also, there is a lot that is in, in other industries. Now, I tend to look at retail and consumer-facing brands, so a lot of retailers sell data on aggregate to their brand partners and suppliers. 
Um, also, a lot of vendors that might find themselves you know, in between two respective partners can have an opportunity of selling aggregate insights that are a competitive resource an insight for you know the brand or the retail or whatever company it is I mean, it's product information management or, or something along those lines where they've got a view of consumer behavior sales data that's going to help a certain brand perspective and last but not least deepening customer relationships now again this is not about new revenue it's not about driving sales this is about long-term customer value and shifting the focus, not just in terms of the business-focused metrics, but the customer-focused metrics that are driving business value over time, rather than at one point in time. And again, Qantas, going back to, to the same, thinking about their core business as an airline. So, so they're using all of their data insights from loyalty program, partner e ecosystem, real-time data, all of that is coming into how they are managing their customer journeys and orchestrating their customer journeys, all to the point where they can think about their broader customer needs and outcomes. So as a customer, I can get recommendations based on my location of when I should leave for the airport based on where I am in the airport, how long, long, long is it going to take me to get to the gate? Anything that you can think of that's going to make my life less stressful is you know, put into that customer journey using the data, using the technology, and triangulating that for the individual customer. And this is what Forrester talks about in terms of next best experiences. Now, the, the next best paradigm is very well known, in, in, especially in marketing. but it is a shift or one level up when you're thinking about experience. So you can either think of the next best product, so that is really focused on sales revenue, what is the next best product to offer. The next best offer, that is gonna be you know, promotion, what's the next best promotion to give to a customer based on your insights. And the next best action, better because it's based on the customer's experiences and broader context, but all of these three are about business outcomes. It's very focused internally. Whereas the experience, Nespec's experience, is thinking about the customer outcome. So using all that insight and context and not just having it within one part of the organization, but coordinating across sales, customer service, uh, marketing, everybody that's relevant for that customer outcome to identify the next best experience to offer to the customer. And all of these elements are part of what we've been talking about to this point about being an insights-driven business. It's customer-focused rather than business-focused. You're thinking about long-term customer value rather than short-term business metrics, which are still relevant, but they're not giving you the full picture when you're thinking about average order value or conversion rates. That's one element. And it's also about a business process. So with the last time, I'm going to think about and we'll share some insights around what does it take you know, in terms of actually wanting to get to insights-driven business. What are the elements that these organizations have all had to tackle to get there and to move their, their maturity up? The first is the organizational alignment, moving from siloed to connected. And these elements are you know, cross-functional collaboration, shifting in the way of working. A lot of these examples, like Scottish Power calls their teams feature teams, but essentially it's an agile approach, where for any product or project, they're focusing on a customer outcome rather than building a particular product or a function. And those teams are formulated from cross functions. So marketing, representative, developer, insights, analytics, all of those are represented in the team. So you are bringing together the insights to action and coordinating across all of the roles to create the most relevant experience for the customer rather than the most relevant product offer step. Um, also, data and insights are C-level. They are supported by a C-level executive. It is part of the business strategy. It's fundamentally that important. That is a strategic conversation. 88% of advanced insights-driven businesses from our survey data globally have a chief data officer <coughs> compared to just half of, of be at beginner level. 
and aligning on customer focus metrics. So this shift to thinking about customer outcomes and having success metrics for your organization that are not just function by function. There is something that coordinates all of these teams that have to work together in feature teams or agile teams to the same objective so that there aren't competing uh, you know, targets or you know, something that is going to stop the collaboration or their desire to spend the time and work together differently. Stitch Fix again. <laughs> you know, this example of how they have data scientists, how that is fundamentally part of the culture and their approach. You know, their teams are even incentivized to go after experimentation and learning. You know, and it's seen as valuable to learn from failures. That's an opportunity. So, you know, again, this, this comes up a lot in terms of, you know, in sessions that, that I've been a, an audience member of. But still, it's still fundamentally a challenge for organizations to get to this. Um, and it is really connected to the organizational alignment and the way of working and eventually getting towards this kind of objective. But also it needs to have the foundations in the systems and the technology that's available and the processes that are in place for these cross-functional teams. So don't, don't focus on this quite yet, <laughs> but systems of insight. So that is about not just the nuts and bolts, not just the technology, but actually about the people, how they're working and having a proper iterative process that is everybody, every part of your organization is using to make sure that they are looking at insights and connecting that back to action. It's a closed loop process that is part of every team and every part of the organization. But it also requires access to that disseminated, governed data that's relevant, having the right insights for the right team to create the right experiences. So this is a system of insights. So for Singapore Airlines, they created their intelligent airline operations solution. But essentially, this was, just as I said, it was not just the technology, but also the way of working, connecting business silos, connecting data from legacy systems all the way through to new sources. Uh, this is going to get out of my area, but having connected layers and all that stuff. Um, but you know, all of the, the tools that are going to allow you to get to the point where you can have the insights, identify what's most relevant from a wide range of sources, and then have the people in the processes, the people with the skill set and understanding. So some of this is education and bringing your, your people to, to that level, but also about the way in which they work, the, the cross-functional teams, the, the approaches, the access to data and having a process and a way of working that requires them and incentivizes them to use insights to inform their decision making. And for Singapore Airlines, this created a wealth of value, not just from a customer experience perspective, but from an operational perspective. Because they had not just the customer insights, but the business intelligence, they could see when there was going to be some kind of issue with a plane delay that was going to have a knock-on effect for a customer getting to their connecting flight so they could address that in advance, get ahead of the knock-on effect that it might have in their operations. From a customer experience perspective, it meant that the you know, flight attendants or the, the people on the ground had the data at their fingertips to know the individual in front of them to the point where even in flight, the stewardesses and stewards could set the table for a left-handed person rather than right-handed. Wow. That kind of level of customer service because they have the insights and the understanding and it's accessible to the person that needs it to make that difference. So this is a system of insights. It's trying to get to that connecting layer of you've got the big, clunky, slow systems that you need, but how do you create the system and the process that's going to be nimble enough to connect that relevant insight to the right pieces and parts of your business. So overall, that is fundamentally an insights-driven business. It's not just about having all of the data resources, customer data, business intelligence, but having the operations, the process, the skill sets within your organization and shifting to a new way of working that is fundamentally based on a deep level of customer understanding. 
And that is where I finish. So thank you.